So first of all, I'd like to start by uh, thanking the Curie Club for having you know, given me this opportunity to come here and speak before you people. Now, uh, I came on 29th of October. So the first set of activities that I was involved in was with the Curie Club. And uh, in the Curie Week, all of you had attended a chemistry quiz, right? So I thought uh, it's a Saturday evening, 9 o'clock after dinner. So I thought I'll try to wake you people up by starting off with a small quiz question. <laughs> and uh, if you had seen the quiz, there was a round called Connect in the quiz, which was, connect, uh, which was conducted by Professor Shimon. So I have here a set of pictures. Now this I had taken from the web, from Wikipedia. Like uh, I have something called Li, lithium atom, then I have helium atom, and then I have some sort of uh, lines drawn here which are put at the end, ends of the cube. Now uh, I have this, and then I have this kind of wavy kind of symbol which is an arrow with a wavy kind of symbol, right? So what I want you people to do is to connect these two pictures. So what would connect these two pictures? See, here I have helium with probably one end of the cube is transparent, probably it could be an ele two, two electrons of helium. This could be lithium and he has tried to put an electrons there. So, uh, yeah, I have given you plenty of clues, so it should be very clear. This was taken from the notebook of a person. And then you have this wavy kind of L, which symbolizes what? So how then how do I connect these two? Is it a one word answer? It's a one word answer. Let me tell you. Uh, let me give you a little more clue, which makes it very simple for you. Uh, it's a person. So uh, actually, this slide I prepared at the last minute. The internet was down, so I couldn't put up the photograph of the person. The answer would have been in the same spirit of what had happened that day. The photograph of the person. So here you have a notebook in which. A very long time ago, a very old notebook taken from Wikipedia. I copied this from Wikipedia. You have electrons filling up corners of a cube. Something that all of us learned in school. It's nothing, nothing. Yeah, you came close. I, I got it. Pardon? No, it's not the Bravais lines. These are electrons. These are electrons. So this was before. Uh, Quantum mechanics really came up, or uh, real clear classification of electronics such as and so on and so forth. So, it had written down all these elements, probably I shouldn't continue so much. Right? And then you have this particular picture. This symbolizes what? Now, okay, uh, these were, uh, this was taken from the notebook of G.M. Lewis, who came up with the Lewis dot structures. Now, incidentally, it was he who coined the term photon. So that's the connection between the two pictures. And uh, so the answer is GM Lewis. So today, in today's talk, what, would be, what we would be doing is, we would be doing something similar. We would try to relate, not exactly this kind of an electronic structure, but uh, an actual electron, the actual electronic structure of atoms, and a laser, which is a lot of number of photons, a very high intensity, high frequency laser. So, uh, the title of today's talk is Chemistry of a Different Kind, Atoms and Molecules in Strong Intense Laser Fields. So, the plan of the talk is as follows. And uh, basically, we will try to answer three questions. <coughs> the first thing is, I'll try to explain to you in what kind of a physical picture are we working in. The second question which we will try to answer is, I'll try to give you a picture. How does an atom in a, in a laser field look like? Now, uh, the usual case, when you have light interacting with an atom, what do you expect to happen? What happens is light transfers energy to an electron. The electron gets excited, goes to a higher excited state, right? This is the usual case. Suppose your light had a little more larger frequency, much higher frequency. So what would happen is the electron would get excited from the down state to a very highly excited. And then finally, it would reach a continuum. And from the continuum, it would ionize. That is what you generally expect. That is what is generally expected. But uh, here, 
we will talk about a picture in which the electron instead of jumping out of the system it gets stabilized in the presence of the laser rather the laser stabilizes the laser. so that picture I will try to analyze here in these four topics now there is a particular name given to this physical uh, picture it is called the kramer hengerberg framework but that is just a name which you have to keep in mind I will try to talk about more about the physics behind it and then uh, then what, what we will do is the next question which we will try to answer is how does an atom with its wave function rather what you would measure in the experiment is not the wave function what you would measure in the experiment is the electron density so how would the electron density of helium atom look like when it is stabilized in a high intensity laser then we would look at one more example see two electrons are not enough for a case we always need multiple number of electrons to see to take into account all kinds of interactions so on and so forth so we will also look at sulfur atom we will also compare both of these and see what kind of differences there are and the other thing is I said that we will look at something called stabilization I will come to I'll come, during the course of the talk I will tell you what is the stabilization that I am talking about now uh, one way once you have such a picture you have such a picture in mind the question is how do you detect it in an experiment right you want to know whether such kind of stable states have already formed has the stabilization already occurred so one way of doing it would be uh, to apply to look at something for the linear star will come why why it should be a linear star effect for a laser dust atom will come to that later now after that what we will do is we will think of chemistry in a very strong stabilized laser what would happen if you take two helium atoms together like what would happen if you take helium and sulfur atoms together? So such kind of things we will talk about. This, so this is the general plan of the talk. And during this plan, we would answer three questions. One is what is the physical picture involved? What is the stabilization that I am talking about? How does an atom look like? And then finally, what kind of chemistry can you do with an atom? Atom with a strong laser, strong high frequency laser. So uh, I'll start off with my talk with nothing, there's no quantum mechanics in this something very very simple now you think of an oscillating particle in an oscillating trap you think of a particle in a trap ok so think of this particular situation suppose the trap oscillates at a higher frequency than the oscillatory motion of the trap particle what would happen? <laughs> will the particle escape? suppose you have something like a well and you have a particle inside it you have a well like this and you have a particle inside which executes an oscillatory motion and then you also have the trap doing an oscillatory motion it could be like this, it could even be like this now suppose the trap oscillates faster than the oscillatory motion of the particle inside then the particle cannot escape right? now such a simple physical model, if you take such a simple physical model and you apply it to a very intense laser dust atom that is what would happen the electron in fact would not ionize but would rather remain inside the system so this is the stabilization which I am going to talk about so the first effect is a stabilization the next effect is there is a kind of hybridization like when the atom sees when you have a laser what you have are mutually perpendicular oscillating electric and magnetic fields right? in my case we would consider a laser which has only an oscillating electric and the laser is actually propagating in a, di a direction which is perpendicular to these mutually perpendicular fields now the thing is in this particular case the laser intensity uh, the, uh, the electric field strength of the laser is so intense that it is comparable to the internal electric field of an atom in such a case you cannot think of techniques like perturbation theory to look at an atom in a laser field so what you would do is the laser completely mixes the whole thing and you see a different kind of picture now I uh, will come to more details of this picture later but uh, first what I want you to do is I want you to have an understanding of what kind of a coordinate system we are working in and what kind of a potential does an electron see in a laser 
Well, when you talk about the oscillatory motion of this potential, yes. the particle not to escape, yes. there must be some implicit phase relationship. There is an implicit, implicit phase relationship. That is very easy. In this particular case, I am talking about a laser, but the phase is zero. And uh, there could also be stabilization when, even when there is uh, a mismatch in the phase, but uh, that we'll, uh, oh, we'll have to check it. There has been quite a bit of literature work on the phase relationship and the particle not escaping also. So the first thing is, uh, this is a Coulombic potential. Suppose you have a charge plus one here at the origin. Now this would be the force of attraction that an electron feels, right? Now uh, when, you, when I have a laser, the electron keeps oscillating. And the electron oscillates such that it reaches a position of maximum amplitude and then keeps returning back as if it is in a trap. Now, here you have this particular quantity called alpha zero. This is the quiver motion of the, the electron. It's the maximum amplitude of oscillation of the electron. So, the electron actually oscillates with uh, this particular quiver distance, which is given by epsilon zero by any omega square, where omega is the frequency of the laser and epsilon zero is the electric field set. So the potential which you have here is a Coulombic potential. Now, suppose you add the thing in this particular coordinate reference frame, in which your potential is oscillating and time is there. A laser is basically the, uh, given by epsilon zero cos omega t, where epsilon zero is your electric field set and cos omega t is the wavelength nature of the, the laser. So, in such a case, both these pictures are the same, right? Both these pic pictures are the same. It doesn't matter whether the uh, potential oscillates or the electron oscillates. It's a question of relative motion. So, what we would be doing is looking at the electron in this particular picture, where the potential now is time dependent and keeps oscillating like this. Uh, so, it, basically, you have a time dependent Coulombic. Now, once you have a time dependent Coulombic potential, you know that such a kind of oscillatory force is felt by the electron. Potential is felt by the electron. Then the next thing you do is you try to break it up into different parts. And that uh, a mathematical way of breaking it up into different parts would be to take a Fourier transform, would be to look at its Fourier components. And the first Fourier component is. And the zero order Fourier component is just a time average of the potential which was shown. A time average of the Coulombic potential. Now, when you do such a kind of time averaging of the Coulombic potential, this is uh, the zero order Fourier component. It's not time dependent, it's static. So, what you see here is that the single well Coulombic potential, which an electron experiences, gets smeared out and becomes a double well potential like this. So, what does this remind you of? You have a single well Coulombic potential which gets smeared up into something which looks like this. What is the closest picture which you have seen which, in which the potential is like this? Think of a diatomic molecule. If you think of a diatomic molecule, where, which, with, uh, suppose a plus one charge placed here and another plus one charge placed here. So you would have a potential which is something like this, right? You have one distance. R. So you would have a Coulombic potential which looks like this. So this is how a diatomic molecule looks like. So in the effect, in the time average picture, when you look at just the zeroth order Fourier component, you would have a laser dust atom looking like a diatomic molecule. If you were to take helium atom, it would look like H2 molecule. So, and this static potential is the part which actually stabilizes the system. This is the, this, this, blue, this blue line is the potential which keeps the electron inside the system. It does not let it ionize. But uh, the great core is that you have something which looks like a diatomic point. Now, uh, what, about the, what about the rest of the parts? In the, uh, Fourier, the rest of the Fourier components come with a time dependence. And actually, if you would look at these 
Fourier components which have been plotted because I have plotted up to the uh, fourth Fourier component. So these are the ones which actually kick the electron out of the system. This is the part of the potential which actually kicks the electron out of the system and which is responsible for ionizing. See this part which is which goes above zero, which goes above uh, uh, this is the part which would which is time dependent and would actually kick the electron out of the system. But what happens at very high frequencies is something very interesting. These, the parts of the potential which are responsible for kicking the electron out of the system keep vanishing when you go to very, very high frequencies. Here what I have plotted is, I have increased the laser frequency from 0 0.1 to 5.1 atom kilos. I will be talking in terms of atom kilos. So uh, even at this particular value, the potential has the, the total potential which tries to keep the electron out of the system as well as zero. And what remains at these high frequencies is only this time independent squared out time average potential which looks like a diagonal form. So this is the stabilization that I was talking about. This is just uh, an approximate representation but it would give you the physics of the picture. Now this is, initially I started with a simple mechanical model, right? How a trap which oscillates faster than the oscillatory motion of the particle tracks the particle. Now, say, that is what has happened here. And, but the, uh, the resultant potential is something that looks like a diagonal. Now, uh, so till now we have seen what is the physics behind the stabilization. Now what we